In this video, we'll be assembling the Brindley Lawn Plug Aerators model PA40BH and PA48BH. Not sure which model of plug aerator you have? Check page 4 of your manual for the specifications. Note, the illustrations on page 5 are to scale for faster identification of hardware during assembly. Simply lay the hardware directly on top of the illustrations to verify that you are using the correct parts. We'll start by assembling the 40-inch plug aerator model PA40BH. Tools required for assembly, a half-inch wrench and socket, a 5 16th inch wrench and socket, and pliers. Step 1. Using the part identifier, organize your hardware and identify that you are in fact assembling the PA40BH. If you are assembling the PA48BH, skip ahead to around the 7 minute and 13 second mark in this video. Step 2A. Align the side plates with the tray as shown here. Add a 5 16th inch flat washer to 8 5 16th inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolts. From the inside, run the bolt through the tray and the side plate and secure each of the 8 bolts with a nylon lock nut on the outside edges of the tray and plates. Note. When tightening the bolts, maintain a specific distance between the side plates between 41 and 41 and an eighth inches. Step 2B. Align the mounting brackets to the outside of the tow bars. Add a 5 16th inch flat washer to 4 5 16th inch by 1 inch hex head bolts and insert the bolt from the outside of the mount bracket as shown. Add a 5 16th inch by 1 inch nylon lock nut to the end of each hex bolt inside of the bracket, but do not fully tighten yet. Step 3. Assemble the mount brackets to the tray by inserting 4 5 16th inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolts through the top side of the tray and the mounting brackets. Add 4 nylon lock nuts to the ends, but do not fully tighten yet. Note, the tow bar will face forward towards the side of the tray with the Brindley label. Step 4A. Assemble the clevis to the tow bars by sliding two 5 16th inch by 2 and a quarter inch carriage bolts through the top and bottom of the clevis assembly and adding two 5 16th inch nylon lock nuts. Then, slide the top and bottom of the clevis over the ends of the tow bar and make sure the bolts end up on either end of the holes in the tow bar. Step 4B. Add a 5 16th inch by 1 and a quarter inch hex head bolt through the holes in the tow bar between the two carriage bolts and add a 5 16th inch nylon lock nut. Step 4C. Insert the hitch pin through the end of the clevis and secure with a hairpin cotter. Step 4D. Now securely tighten all of the fasteners installed on step 4A and 4B. After that, securely tighten the hardware installed from step 2B through step 3. Step 5. Assembling the spoons. Note, the rounded part of the spoons fits against the tube to lock into place. Align the plug spoons to each of the welded plates opposite the side of the welds to all of the tube assemblies as shown. Run 24 5 16th inch by 3 quarter inch bolts through the plugging spoons and secure each of the 24 hex head bolts to each tube assembly with 24 5 16th inch lock nuts as shown. Repeat this process on all three tubes to complete the spoon assemblies. Now insert a nylon bearing into both ends of all of the tube assemblies. Step 6. Adding the tube assemblies to the axle. First, add a machine bushing to the end of the axle and slide it down. Then, insert the axle assembly through the hole in the right side plate as shown. Continue adding these parts to the axle in the following order. The first end tube assembly. Note, face the short end of the end tube assembly towards the side plate. Make sure the nylon bushing is in place and add a machinery bushing. Then add the center tube assembly. Note, in the center tube assembly, the ends are identical lengths. Both plates are two and three quarter inches from the ends of the tubes. Make sure the nylon bushing is in place, add another machinery bushing, and add the end tube assembly, with the short end also facing towards the side plate. Note. One or more machinery bushings can be added to the end of the axle on the outside edge as needed to eliminate any side play in the axle assembly. Step 7. Adding the handle. Step 7A. Push the axle assembly through the left side plate as far as possible. Install the lift handle assembly with the welded tube facing out to the end of the axle assembly. 
rotate the end of the axle so the hole in the flat plate matches up with the hole in the lift handle assembly. Secure the handle with a 5 16th inch by 1 and inch hex head bolt and a 5 16th inch nylon lock nut. Step 7B. Slide the grip handle over the end of the lift handle assembly. Note, using soapy water may help while adding the handle grip. Step 8. Adding the wheels. Add a 5 8 inch flat washer to a 5 16th inch by 4 inch hex bolt and slide the bolt assembly through one wheel. Note, make sure the extended offsets on the hub are installed toward the plug aerator. On the side with the extended offsets, add another 5 8 inch flat washer and a 5 8 inch hex nut. Thread the hex nut as far down as possible, still allowing the wheel to rotate freely. Continue by running the hex bolt through the holes in the lift handle and add another lock washer and a hex nut. Repeat the process on the other end, adding a flat washer to a hex bolt, sliding the bolt through the wheel, making sure the extended offset points towards the plug aerator, then add another flat washer and a hex nut, and thread the hex nut as far as possible, still allowing the wheel to rotate freely. Run the hex bolt through the axle assembly, add one more lock washer and another hex nut. Tighten using the inside and outside bolts only. You may need to loosen the inside bolt a little bit to allow the wheel to rotate freely. Step 9. Insert the transport pin in the rear hole on the same side as the lift handle assembly as shown. Secure in place with a nylon lock nut. Note, be careful as the lift handle assembly will pivot to raise and lower the wheels. This transport pin allows the handle to be locked in place during transport and during assembly. Step 10. The final step is to level the tray by tightening the bolts installed on step 2B. This adjustment is made with the aerator attached to your riding mower or lawn tractor with the wheels in the transport position. Adjust the tow bar and tray until the top of the tray is level and tighten all four bolts. Congratulations, your assembly is complete. Please see the manual for all operation maintenance and service tips. For questions, please call customer service at 877-728-8224. If you are assembling the Brinley 48-inch plug aerator model PA48BH, start here. Assembling the PA48BH. Tools required for assembly, a half-inch wrench and socket, a 5 16th inch wrench and socket, and pliers. Step 1. Using the part identifier, organize your hardware and verify that you are in fact assembling the PA48BH. Step 2A. Align the side plates with the tray as shown with the triangular edges on the outside of the tray. Add a 5 16th inch flat washer to 8 5 16th inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolts and pass the bolts through the inside of the tray and the side plates, securing each bolt in place with a nylon lock nut on the outside edges of the tray and plates as shown. Note, when tightening the bolts, measure to maintain a specific distance between the side plates of 48 to 48 and an eighth inches. Step 2B. Align the mounting brackets to the outside of the tow bars as shown. Add a 5 16th inch flat washer to each of the 5 16th inch by 1 inch hex bolts and insert the bolt from the outside of the mount bracket through the end of the tow bar. And add a 5 16th inch nylon lock nut to the end of each bolt. Note, do not fully tighten yet. Step 3. Attaching the tow bars and center plate. Note, the mount bracket should be pointing forward towards the side of the tray with the Brindley labels. Align the mount brackets to the tray by inserting four 5 16th inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolts through the top side of the tray and the mounting brackets. Add four 5 16th inch nylon lock nuts to the end of each bolt, but do not fully tighten just yet. Then, align the center plate with the tray as shown and insert three 5 16th inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolts through the top of the tray and hold in place with three 5 16th inch nylon lock nuts. Step 4. Clevis Assembly. Slide two 5 16th inch by 2 and a quarter inch carriage bolts through the top and bottom of the Clevis Assembly and add two 5 16th inch nylon lock nuts. Then slide the Clevis Assembly over the end of the tow bar, positioning the holes in the end of the tow bar between the two carriage bolts. Then slide a 5 16th inch by 1 and a quarter inch hex head bolt through the holes in the tow bar and add a 5 16th inch nylon lock nut. Note, do not fully tighten yet. Step 4B. Now secure the tow bars in place by using a 5 16th inch by 1 and a quarter inch hex head bolt and a 5 16th inch nylon lock nut. Note, do not fully tighten just yet. Step 4C. Insert the hitch pin into the clevis and secure in place with a hairpin cotter. 
Step 4D. Now securely tighten all fasteners installed on Step 4A and 4B. After that, securely tighten all of the hardware installed from Step 2B through Step 3. Step 5. Attaching the spoons to the tubes. Note, the bottom rounded part of each spoon fits against the tube to lock it into place. Align the plugging spoons to each welded plate on the side opposite the welds of all of the tube assemblies. By sliding 32 5 16 inch flat washers over 32 5 16 inch by 3 quarter inch hex head bolts and passing them through the spoons and the tubes and securing each one in place with 32 5 16 inch lock nuts. Repeat this process on all tubes to complete the spoon assemblies. Now insert a nylon bearing into both ends of all of the tube assemblies. Step 6. Adding the tube assemblies to the axle. Note, spotting the difference between the tubes. The end tube assemblies have one short end, and the end of the center tube assemblies have identical lengths. Add a machinery bushing to the end of the axle and slide it down to the back. Then insert the axle assembly through the right side plate as shown. Continue adding these parts to the axle in the following order. One end tube assembly. Make sure the short end of the end tube assembly is facing toward the side plate. Then add another machinery bushing and then add a center tube assembly. Then slide the axle through the center plate. Add the other center tube assembly, then add another machinery bushing and the last end tube assembly making sure the short end of the end tube assembly is facing toward the side plate. Note, one or more machinery bushings can also be added to the end of the axle on the outside edge as needed to eliminate any side play in the axle assembly. Note, use caution while flipping the aerator over. Now tighten the bolts connecting the center plate to the tray. Step 7A. Push the axle assembly through the left side plate as far as possible and rotate so the hole faces to the rear as shown. Then, install the lift handle to the end of the axle assembly with the welded tube facing out. Pass a 5 16 by 1 1⁄2 inch hex head bolt through the lift handle and through the axle assembly and secure in place with a 5 16 inch nylon lock nut. Step 7B. Slide the handle grip over the end of the lift handle assembly. Using soapy water may help while adding the handle grip. Step 8. Adding the wheels. Note, make sure the extended offsets in the hub are pointing toward the plug aerator. Add a 5 8 inch flat washer to a 5 16 inch by 4 inch hex bolt. Slide the bolt assembly through one wheel with the wheel hub extensions pointing towards the aerator and add one 5 8 inch flat washer and a 5 8 inch hex nut. Thread the hex nut as far as possible, still allowing the wheel to rotate freely. Continue by running the hex bolt through the hole in the lift handle and adding a lock washer to the end of the bolt and a hex nut. Note, tighten the inside hex nut while holding the outside bolt to secure the wheel. If the wheel becomes too tight, you may need to loosen the inside nut away from the wheel so that the wheel spins freely. Repeat the process on the other end, adding a flat washer to a hex bolt, sliding the bolt through the wheel, making sure the extended offset points towards the plug aerator, then add another flat washer and a hex nut, and thread the hex nut as far as possible, still allowing the wheel to rotate freely. Run the hex bolt through the axle assembly, add one more lock washer, and another hex nut. Again, tighten the inside hex nut while holding the outside bolt to secure the wheel. You may need to loosen the inside bolt away from the wheel to allow the wheel to spin freely. Step 9. Insert the transport pin in the rear hole on the same side as the lift handle assembly as shown. Secure it place with a nylon lock nut. Note, you may need to use a pair of pliers to hold the pin in place while tightening the bolt. Note, this lever moves the wheels in and out of transportation mode. Use caution as the lift handle assembly will pivot as it is used to raise and lower the wheels. This pin allows the handle to be locked in place during transport and during assembly. Step 10. Leveling. The final step is to level the tray by tightening the bolts installed on step 2B. This adjustment is made with the aerator attached to your riding mower or lawn tractor with the wheels in the transport position. Adjust the tow bar and tray until the top of the tray is level and tighten all four bolts. Congratulations, your assembly is complete and your Brindley 48 inch plug aerator is now ready for operation. Please see the manual for all operation maintenance and service tips. For questions, please call customer service at 877-728-8224.
Brindley, making things better since 1839.